Hello everybody, this is Solar Tiger with another wind and solar power update video. Today is Thursday the 25th of February and the time now is approximately 5 past 10. This video is about how I have rewired my system and I will show you what I have done. This here is the battery box with the three 100 amp hour AGM deep cycle sealed lead acid batteries. They're the batteries that you have seen before. But I have changed the wiring. If I just come in closer, you can see what I have done. As I showed you in the last video, I bought some new wire. This wire here, the 16 mil squared cable, which is good for 110 amps. I rewired my system. So, as you can see, we have a cable from the positive of the battery through the, the new thicker wire to the main battery fuse. This is the MIDI fuse. This is a 40 amp fuse. This is my main fuse. I'll just focus on it a bit. There you go, you can see it says 40 amps. This is the main fuse that protects the whole system. I started off with 40 amps as it seemed to be a good value. But if necessary, I can change it in the future. It's a bolt down fuse, and that's how that is. It comes in a protective cover, which you can snap sh shut. It's hard to do with one hand. There you go, it clicks shut, and that is the main battery fuse. If anything disastrous happens further, down the line, this fuse will blow and I won't have a fire. So from the main fuse, we follow the cable to the main battery disconnect. Turning off here disconnects everything from the batteries. So when we have a feed down here, that goes to the charge controller. And the thinner cable goes through a 25 amp breaker, which is down there. Breaker's down there. And that feeds through to the inverter, which is on the front here. The inverter has a built-in 35 amp fuse. So the 25 amp breaker will go first. That will give me about 250 watts on this 300 watts pure sine wave inverter, so that's fine. If we follow the main line, which is the red cable down the bottom there, you follow it there, and we go up to my new panel because there's nothing here anymore on the back of the battery box. That's all gone. So we go up here, up, 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 up to my new cabinet. This is my new wind and solar power cabinet. So we will take a closer look. It's all now mounted on the wall. So if we follow up. Okay, in this bundle of cables, there's a thick red and black. That is the battery cable. We come up here. We follow it up, 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 up here to a main breaker. This is a 32 amp DC circuit breaker. This one here, about battery bank. It's a 32 amp breaker rated at 250 volts DC. And then we have a feed up to the charge controller, which is the middle set of cables. Now this breaker is wired with the positive at the top facing the battery bank. So normally, when charging, power comes out of the charge controller 
into the bottom of the breaker and back to the battery bank. So usually this breaker operates in reverse. You should always connect the positive of the breaker to the highest source potential. In this case, the batteries are the highest source of potential. If there is any catastrophic failure in the charge controller, i.e. a short, this breaker will trip. It will be forward, the current will be going through it forward from the battery and it will, will trip. So that's the reason why it's wired that way around. So, on the solar side, the cables come in from outside, up through the main bundles of cables, up here to the solar panel input meter. That will turn you around so you can see it there. That is the input meter. And you go from there to the solar panel breaker. This has the positive of the breaker wired towards the solar panels and this is a 10 amp breaker. This is mainly just a disconnect because the panels can only produce just under 6 amps so under normal circumstances this breaker should never trip. So that's how that works. Again it's 10 amp breaker rated at 250 volts DC and it feeds into the charge controller. The wind comes from here. We go up through the main bundle of cables and the wind comes out as the blue cable, the blue and black one. It goes up, 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 over through a watt meter and into the wind charge controller. I went back to using the wind charge controller as it is simple for me to install and also will limit the voltage on the batteries. I found that without using the regulator when I had a very windy spell along with some sunshine I did go over 15 volts on the batteries. I went up to 15.2 volts which was not good for the batteries. So I put the regulator back so that it will limit it. So that's how that works. And then we have a load output from the charge controller. Goes down here to the DC consumption power meter through a switch for the load. And then we go to a fuse box and out to the loads. I don't have the switches anymore. I have one switch there that can tires all of the loads. It was just easier for me to fix. So that's how that is. It's all in a cabinet and I hope to put a door on it when I can find a suitable lightweight piece of wood and I'll put a door on it so it will hide all the indicator lights that shine out at night. So today on the solar side I'll turn you around so you can see we have repeat 148 watts that was 3 amps, we produced 208 watt hours, the wind turbine produced, let's see, the wind turbine produced 8 watts peak, so current of, current of 0.87 amps, we produced 2 amp hours and that's 1.2 watt hours so obviously not very windy on the DC consumption side of things we have consumed consumed 8.5 amp hours 107 watt hours so that's how that goes the batteries went down to Minimum voltage of 12.66. The current battery voltage is 12.78. So I used the inverter a little bit as well, but 
So we produced 200 watt hours and we used 107.8 on the DC side. So that's how that works. So everything is working well. So this is just a quick update. I charged some batteries. I'm using the DC charger. I used the inverter to charge the headphones and the heated jacket battery. So not much load. Used it for about an hour or two for that. And if I take you to the BM1 compact, you can see the battery voltage is 12.9 volts. I'm currently drawing 1.1 amps. And the batteries are 95% charged. I'm running one LED light, two LED lights, charging the iPad and that's about it so this is solar tiger saying thank you for watching and until next time goodbye thank you